Hey, squad. So, this is gonna be a little different, like, totally different gameplay than what you're used to on Miss Cat Squad. This is gonna be a really, really long episode on this channel because I didn't feel like it was right to kind of break up this gameplay. This is the beginner's guide, and this was recommended by Riley on Patreon for me to play the whole game. And I'm so glad that I did because this game came in the time of my life that I needed it most. And you'll see why throughout the whole gameplay. Like, you'll, you'll notice that when I did play this game, I was kind of out of it. I was upset. I was, like, not high energy. And this was... I played this game a little bit before my major burnout that I had with the channel. And when I did play it, I resonated with it so easily because of what we were going through, when I was going through. And if you guys were here when I did go through that burnout, you know how I felt about it. When Riley, when she recommended this game for me, I, didn't have, I had no idea what it was about. I was like, oh, oh, great. It looks like it's like based on the reviews and everything. It looks like it's like psychological and it's like life changing in a way. And it's one of those like really good like indie games that have like a strange but nice experiences to them. And I figured, hey, okay, this looks like it would fit in great with the channel, but I had no idea at all what this game was going to be. And I'm so glad that I did play it because you're going to notice something about me in this, in this whole gameplay. I'm a lot quieter, and there's a reason for that, because I was through my whole major burnout. So, if you want to watch the whole thing, it is pretty long. Get your snacks ready because it's going to be really long, but... It's one of those games that I hope that you can find a great, like, goodness to it and a good strong message to it because I did and I took a lot away from it. And just to warn you that it does get really, really upsetting. <laughs> so if you're triggered by that, I suggest do not watch this because there are moments when it just gets very, like, dark in a sense. But it's a really good game and I suggest everyone do play it. And yeah, I hope you do enjoy our Let's Play of it, because I certainly did, and it's a one-of-a-kind experience. That's, that's the best way I can describe it. So, without any further ado, you should see my camera footage uh, pop up in the screen very soon. But yeah, this is a totally different experience, so if you watch the whole thing, kudos to you. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoy it. Hi there. Thank you very much for playing The Beginner's Guide. My name is Davey Reedon, I wrote The Stanley Parable, and while that game tells a pretty absurd story, today I'm going to tell you about a series of events that happened between 2008 and 2011. We're going to look at the games made by a friend of mine named Coda. Now these games mean a lot to me. Uh, I met Coda in early 2009 at a time when I was really struggling with some personal stuff and his work pointed me in a very powerful direction. I found it to be a good reference point for the kinds of creative works that I wanted to make. So just to start you off, this is, I think, the first game he ever made. It's a level for Counter-Strike. This is you so cool. You can walk around here, by the way. Thanks, dude. And uh, mostly it's just Coda learning the basics of building here? a 3D environment. But what I like is that even though he starts from the <laughs> simple I'm aesthetic stuck. of a there desert town, he then scatters these colorful abstract blobs and impossible floating crates around the level. Looks like Uncharted here. Of here. course, it destroys the illusion that this actually is a desert town, uh -huh. and instead this level becomes a kind of calling card from its creator. Okay. It's like a reminder that this video game was constructed by a real person. Hmm. And it kind of makes you wonder, what was going through his head as he was building this? True. This is what I like about all of Coda's games. Coda I mean, seems like a cool not dude. Not that they're all fascinating as games, but that they the are that? all going to give us access to their creator. Huh. I want us to see past the games themselves. Okay. I want to get to know who this human being really is. Cool. And that's exactly what we're going to do here. Sounds awesome, dude. So, it's 2008, Coda starts making these games, and he never releases any of them. He doesn't yeah. put them onto the internet, he just makes them and then immediately abandons them and no. they sit on his computer forever. And I think he really understood this image of himself as a recluse. Uh, at one point, he jokingly renamed his computer's recycling bin to Important Games Folder. 
Oh. So, you know, this was just no. how he worked. He tended to crank <sighs> them out one after the other without even yeah. really pausing to try to understand what he had just made until suddenly one day he just stopped. In 2011, that was it. He made his last game and then he hasn't made another one since. <sighs> And that's why I've taken this opportunity to gather all of his work together. Oh, that's it's so because sweet! because I find his games powerful and interesting, and I oh, like this collection so to reach sweet. him, to maybe encourage him to start creating again. Please do it! And if the people like you who play this also happen to find his work interesting, I then I'm do. sure it'll just send that much stronger of a message of encouragement to oh, that's Kara. That's so sweet! So thanks for joining me on this. If you have a particular interpretation that I haven't mentioned here, or uh -huh. if you just need to get in touch, you can email me at d-a-v-e-y-w-r-e-d-e-n okay. at gmail.com. Okay, that's about it for introduction. Okay. Let's take a look at Coda's first proper game. Yes, sir. As each game is loading, I'll show you the date that it was completed. This first one was made in November 2008. Cool. Oh my god, you know what? So much hard work goes into these games, and I already could tell that this is, like, awesome. Whoa. Hello? Are we okay here? Uh, whoa. Whisper machine. Status active. Oh! Oh no! Why do I shoot? I click. Oh, cool. This game is called Escape from Whisper. And Where's it's one Whisper? of the more generic games you'll see from Coda. Huh. Okay. Where I got shoot? Where I got shoot? Where I got shoot? Where I got shoot, boy? I gotta go to the light. To the light. To the light. To the light. To the <gasps> what, what is that? Am I supposed to be shooting it? Go, 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 go. Did I just run out of bullets? I think I just ran out of bullets. Uh, oh, 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 dude, no, no. If anything gonna jump out, I think I just wasted all my bullets. Ah, uh, whisper machine, status active. Okay, go, 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 go. Something better not be yet. Yeah, how do I reload? Uh, anybody gonna jump out at me? Anybody gonna jump out at me? No. The hostile alien life forms. It kind of no. looks like this no. game was abandoned mid development. Aww. For instance, you have this gun, which you yeah. think would indicate that there are supposed to be monsters or enemies somewhere. Yeah. But then clearly there are no enemies anywhere. Huh. You can't even reload the gun when you run there out of you bullets. There you go. But ultimately we don't really know. Maybe Coda thought that actually it was complete the way that it is. Yeah. And I think that we should talk about his games for what they are, rather than for what they're not. Okay. Alrighty, so, uh, there's no aliens, I'll be good. I can see the bottom of the universe from this room. Whoa. Well, that's awesome. Dude, you make good games, keep making them! Oh, oh, oh! No, oh! I don't wanna go that way! What's this way? Nothing. Okay, we gotta keep going forward. So, at least there's no alien life forms. <laughs> this way. Who jumper? This way. No, no, uh, bah, bah. Eh. Oh god, for god's sake, there's a maze. Apparently this space station has a labyrinth on it. I... Uh, Great. Sure, I don't know. There's really no reason for it that I've ever been able to discern, so in the interest of time, I'm just gonna skip you on past it. Ha, ah, good. Thank you, sir! Okay. Okay, this is the part that's interesting. Okay. The game has this narrative about the whisper machine and how it has to be turned off, and then you get to the engine room. Yeah. Where are we going? Oh, is hey, it? Hey, you there, in the engine room. You could save us all. That beam is powering a whisper machine. We could disrupt it by introducing a great enough heat signature. Okay. If you, your body could stop the beam. It's so much to ask, but for all of our lives, would you do it? Could you give yourself? I'll do it, I'll be a hero. No, no, no. I don't want to do it. Uh. Let me pause here for a second. What you just experienced, stepping into the beam and then dying, is probably what Coda had initially intended when he was developing this level. Okay. But when he first compiles and plays it, something goes wrong. There's a bug somewhere. And this is what happens instead. Oh, no. Oh, okay. Let's go forward, let's go. Oh. We. Oh. oh my goodness. 
the beam causes you to start floating. Oh. And this is an important moment for him. Because yes, this is technically a glitch, but Coda identifies something human about it. Hmm. Like how small it makes you feel in the face of this larger chaotic system. Or this floating True. could be the afterlife, a peaceful place huh. juxtaposed against all of the hysteria that you've just had to traverse. I, I don't even know. Uh, I have no idea what he was thinking. <laughs> but what's clear is that after making this, something lodges itself in his brain. He wants to do more of these really weird and experimental designs. Oh, no. So he stops work on this and moves on to a stream of tiny little games that go in all sorts of directions. Cool. Let's go ahead and take a look at the first game he made yes, sir. after leaving this one behind. We shall do that. So, is this still November 2008? How long does it take to make games anyway? Whoa. Where are we? The past was behind her. Do I go behind? Yep. In this game, you can only walk backwards. What? What? Oh, okay, so... Eh. Eh. Okay, oh, I got through. Okay, good. This is creepy! This is really So it's a short and okay, relatively minimalist experiment combining Whoa. motion and narrative. It is less advanced than the previous game, but actually it seems to be more focused, more uh -huh. complete. Code is trying to give it a unique voice rather than simply basing awesome. it on a pre-existing trope. Oh. See, what does that say? When she stops and looks, it becomes clearer. Oh, this is awesome. Go, go back behind. Oh my god. But the future is always behind her. But, what does it say? But something, she has strength. To comfort it? To confront it? It's a short it, little it's... thought. It says what it wants to say, and then it ends. Wow. Didn't need anything more than that. Which, to me, is why it works. Because it wow. gets out quick. Okay, next one. Best game ever. How- wow. Ah, uh, we're in the dark! Great. At least we can move forward on this one. You are now entering- Oh no. Where? What am I doing? Where am I going? Ah. Uh. And that's it. Okay, the meaning of this what? game won't be clear just yet. Please be patient with me for a few more games, and I promise you'll see what makes it okay. interesting. Okay, okay, we'll do, sir. December 2008. Well, he's like popping out games left and right. Nonsense. Oftentimes, Koda would put bizarre titles like this one direction. at the start of his games. Oh, no. I wish I'd known him at the time that he was making these early games. Huh. He would really only talk to me about his work as he was making it. Huh. Once he stopped work on a game, like, that was it. It was dead to him. And I don't agree with that at all, but what are you gonna do? Okay, we're going up. We're gonna be fine. There's creepy noises. What? Once you've been slowed to an absolute crawl, the door at the top of the stairs opens. Oh my god. So why, if Coda's not showing these games to anyone, why bother opening the door at all? Well, to show you, I'm modifying the game oh, that's creepy. so that when you press enter, it'll bring you back up to full speed so you can enter the door for yourself. There we go. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, not going back down there. Oh, that like that's like symbolic for something. Okay. Whoa, 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 whoa. Press you to surrender. You are the queen. A room that's dusting warm and nice even... and filled with little ideas for games. Whoa. You walk around. Whoa. Coda would often tell me that he didn't mind if people thought of him as cold or distant. Uh, he said that he knew that he was actually a vibrant and compassionate this person. Is so cool. But that it takes time to really see that. It can be a very slow climb to get there. Wow. So basically, it's like psychological for him. Oh, this is so sweet. Live on a boat. Take you. Whoa. Wow. So much effort goes into games. Ready, set, fish. Okay. Are we going fishing? Oh. I think we might be going fishing. 
This is so sweet that he was able to feature him like this. Like, ugh. And these are fun games, man. Keep making them. Oh, a key. Well, this is new for Coda. It's an actual puzzle. Go ahead and see if you can solve it. Uh, jumpies. Uh. Ah, uh, yay! I did it. But what's the dinner? Uh. What? Does one door close and another one opens? Is that what it's gonna be? Um. Okay, hold on. Eh? <gasps> I locked myself in! Don't forget that solution. Because there you go. we're going to see this puzzle again soon. Okay. We're gonna see it a lot. Oh no. Is this, was that like his trademark? That's fun. It's a lot, e a lot easier than the puzzles in uh, Uncharted. Oh, I like this music too. So that seems to be it, right? You walk down a corridor, you solve the puzzle, yeah. you get to the end. Simple enough. Bada bing, bada boom. Alright, now I'm going to modify the game again so that when you press enter, it'll remove all of the walls from this room. Okay. What the mother. What the mother. What is this? Um. How about that? There was more to it than we had any way of knowing. Oh my god. I actually find it funny that this game comes after the stairs game, since they essentially convey the opposite idea. So, uh, in the stairs game, a dull exterior concealed a rich interior. Uh -huh. And then, in this level, a dull interior hides this fantastic outer world. Yeah. Either way, I think that the point is the same. Is that most of the time, you don't get to know what you're missing. Or mm -hmm. even that you're missing anything. That's not your role as a player. True. So if your role here is not to understand, then what is it? Hmm. Wow. Please finish these. They're very interesting. Oh, are we back? We're back to this. Da -da -da. You are now uh -huh. exiting. So this, combined with the entering game from earlier, tells us that Coda believes his games are connected somehow. Hmm. It could even be that the stairs game and the puzzle game are literally connected in between this and the entering game. There's a bigger picture that all of his games are meant to play a role in, some larger meaning that we won't be able to grasp until we've seen all of them. And once we have, we can step back and start to understand what exactly that bigger picture is. Okay. This is so interesting. So interesting. He made so many in just like a like a few months time. I don't even know how to do it, but the great and lovely descent. Oh, okay. Uh, hello, Mr. Housey. How you doing, Mr. Housey? <laughs> oh, God. Oh, Let's talk God. about video game development for a second. Yeah. Every video game runs on what's called an engine, which determines what the game can and cannot do. Okay. So, in other words, the engine is a set of tools for game development. To make all of these games, Coda is using an engine called Source. Like all engines, Source has certain things that it does well, and it has certain things that it does poorly. Mm. One of the things that it does Ooh. very well is boxy linear corridors. Mm. That's why so many of Coda's games are set in these large, flat, empty rooms, is just because he's working with what the engine what the does heck? well. It's creepy. I did not know that. That is awesome. The tools available to the creator shape what Ooh. kinds of creative work they're going to end up making. Um. You might consider paying attention to the architecture in Coda's games to notice how cool. they seem to stem Boing. from an engine that's very good Boing. at producing linear boxy corridors. Yeah. This is creepy though. Uh, no! Ah! I died! Whoa. Whoa. Up. Uh, oh. Okay. We're still going. I want to eat at that cafe. Looks nice. Oh god. Can I go down there? Oh. What goes through his mind when he was making this? What is that thing? Hello, Mr. Dude? You can't go in there. Ooh. What we got? What we got? Ooh. So over I heard somebody 
Somebody open something. Somebody open something. Um. All right. Whoa. Oh my god. This is so interesting. What went through your mind when making? What was that? Okay. What is that? What is that noise? I'm really freaked out right now, guys. I'm freaked out. What? Okay. Dude, where'd your voice go? Oh, oh fudge. Okay. Oh. Are we in a prison? It looks like a prison. It looks like we're in a prison. This looks like something that would come out of a dream. This prison. It is a Funny prison. enough, in Coda's original design, the door stayed shut for a full hour before letting you go. Oh. If you don't mind, I think we're gonna skip that. Are you kidding me? This is something that he and I used to argue about a lot. You know, whether a game ought to actually be playable, whether it means anything if no one can get through it. And I would always defend that, you know, all this work goes into the game, why not make it playable yeah. and accessible? And so we just got into heated arguments over it, and there was one <laughs> time that after one of these conversations, he went home, and a day or two later, he sent me a zip file uh -huh. entitled Playable Games. Oh no. That was full of hundreds of individual games each of which was just an empty box that you walked around in and nothing else. Believe me, I played every single one of those just to find out if there was like a gag hidden somewhere. There wasn't. He li wow. Well, at least they have a cute friendship though. Um, guess it's time to go back down. We gotta keep on going down. We gotta keep on going down. This is really creepy. This reminds me of like one of those surreal dreams that you have in your Anybody? Whoa, pretty! Where are we now? But it, it, you went down, you should be going up on a roof. Oh! It's the puzzle again, with the exact same solution as the last time. Good. Oh. Hold on. There we go. Yes. There's still no clear indication of what makes this puzzle so special that Coda is going oh. to return to it over and over. But I promise I'll share with you my interpretation very shortly. Okay. Sounds good, dude. I trust you enough. Oh man. The thing is, is like people don't understand how much effort, heart, and hard work goes into games. Even if they're simple, tiny, like boxy games. What the hell is that? You there. Did you come from up above? Here, Coda begins using a kind there? of dialogue system that he fashioned out of the engine's Whoa. chat capabilities. Use the one, two, three buttons on your keyboard to respond. Oh! Yes, there was a world stamped with whiteness. Yes, there was an enormous prison it's been hours in. Yes, there were these floating colored blocks. Uh, the first one. Oh my god, they're so cute. That's the world above. You've been there. Now this is important. Did you have to get enough puzzles and two door switches? Yes, I did. That was literally the last thing I did before coming here. No, I don't remember having to go through any puzzle. I'd rather not tell you. After all, we're only je we only just met. Yes. A little scary. Again, perfect. Now please, tell us how you solved it. Tell us the solution. Tell us how you get to those- Wait, are they prisoners? Are they prisoners? I- I don't remember how I solved it. I'm trying to remember, but I can't. I didn't solve it. Someone else let me in. Trust me. You don't want to go over there. Three. Uh oh. Oh no, but I do. We do. We need to get there. Do you understand? Not- Do you understand? It's the most important thing in the world. We have to escape this prison. Ah, uh, yeah, I was right. There must be an ending. I promised you. Ooh. Okay, dudes. Uh, is that it? Is there no ending to them? Oh, what the heck? Hello, how did you get here? Was there a puzzle? Yes. No, I've been here this entire- What? I suggest you go over there and the puzzle sometime. It's not meant to be solved, but you can sit in the back space in the middle. 
What happens if I solve it? Why would I sit in the back, Space? Who are you? They're creepy, speak. Oh, and it's plenty peaceful. It may not seem that way at first, but let's go to myself. Uh, okay. Thanks, dude. Huh. <laughs> They're really creepy. This, this creeped me out. And so we make one last descent down to the final floor of the level. Okay. If something jumps out, I swear to God, I'm not gonna be happy. Please, no jump, beast. Please, no jump, beast. What the hell? Is this a school? It's a lamppost. Okay, I can't tell you quite why, but for some reason, Coda fixates on this lamppost. It's going to appear at the end of every single one of his games from here on out. Why? I'll tell you what I think. Uh, I think that up to this point, you know, he's been making really strange and abstract games yeah. with no clear purpose, and maybe you can only float around in that headspace for so long. Because now he wants something to hold on to. He wants a reference point. He wants the work to be leading to something. Mm. He wants a destination, which is what this lamppost is. It's a destination. We're going to see it in the work as well. His games are just going to become a lot more cohesive, yeah. a lot more fully developed, with more of a clear idea behind them. And as we go, that idea will get clearer and clearer and clearer. This is creepy. Let's keep going, guys. I'm really creeped out right now. Hmm, but I mean I get that because you can hold on to the lamppost and this game is connected to the internet as you walk around You can leave notes All notes you see are left by other players What? No way. No way. No, 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 no way Nice room not So first off, I'm sure you can deduce this, but this game is not connected to the internet. All of oh. the notes that you're going to see have been written by Coda. This was actually the first game of his that I ever played. Oh. This was shortly after I met him at a weekend game jam in Sacramento, where I grew up. Huh. I saw him working on this very level, oh. and it was just so different from anything that anyone else Whoa. was doing. Holy so shit. right away I was oh. like, I have to be friends with this person. <laughs> In retrospect, Can I think I was probably me? a bit too pushy, yeah. trying to get his attention. Uh, Hello. I was over-enthusiastic. But he was very gracious about it and Reasonable. very patient with me. <laughs> and I cooled off eventually. Aww. Everyone oh, read feel this. Feel free to skip over any of these notes if they're not doing anything for hey. you. Nothing extra is going to happen if you read all of them. This place makes me sad. Either way, to me they convey a sense of loneliness. I see this person who's filled with thoughts and feelings yeah. and beliefs and has no way to express them except as scattered and unheard voices in a game that wasn't meant to be played. Oh my god, that's so sad! There are too many messages in this area. But it's ironic, isn't it? That in playing this Why? game and seeing how alone Coda often felt, that we get to know him better and actually kind of connect with him. One man will read. And I have all to be honest with you. This, this summer, idea is really seductive. You'll believe to me. the blue speech that I could just bubbles can talk. Play someone's game and see the voices in their head We're and get to know space. them better and have to do less of the okay. messy in-person cool. socializing. Cavern. Okay. I could just get to know you through your work. Do you feel I think this is why I always liked Dakota's games so much. Like a hero. Is because yet? it felt like they let me have that connection. Yeah. It felt as though he was inviting me personally into his world. And then I feel less lonely, too. Do not be afraid to care. That's a good point. I just saw a flying penguin. Let me tell you, it was the most majestic thing. What the hell? I can't even read all that. What the heck? It's so tiny. Like the noise is... The shit is this cavern? Oh, I'm not gonna read them all, but oh my god, this is scary. This is creepy. I refuse to believe. Okay. 
recognize the place. Oh, wait, I do. There's nothing here. Go back. Whoa. Don't listen to the other guy. <laughs> what? Fr a free t-shirt? Need other side door so we... Open sesame. <laughs> oh god, this is creeping me out. I'm going this way now. New door. I would like very much to be desired. Whoa. This is kind of like really freaking me out for some reason, but it's so cool. It would take forever to read all of these. Dude, where'd your voice go? I think I'm this. So I'm not going anywhere. I need someone to talk to. Oh my god, Coda! You're so sad. This is the note? Don't listen to the other note. <laughs> I'm not safe. What's going through your mind? Whoa. What is this? Okay. Okie dokes. Stop pretending you are other people. Oh. Devil What the heck? He was himself the most horrible creature he could in What the frig? Guys, this is creepy. Well, I'm here now. Yeah, we're all here now. There must be a reason here, though. What the heck? Oh my god. Okay, so this guy must be really upset over something, but this is creepy. At the end of this level, there we're going to see the puzzle again. And here, I'll tell you what I think the puzzle means. Each of these oh. games represents an idea oh. that was on Coda's mind at the time that he was making it. Was it and the puzzle is a way of closing the door on a previous chapter of his life oh. before moving on to the next one. Awesome. In each of his games, after exploring a theme that you know, he might find difficult, Coda can then place this puzzle that he knows has a reliable solution, mm. he understands exactly how it works, and what so it gives frick? him a simple mechanism for moving on. Oh my god, I have been here literally for an hour. And because there's this dark area between the doors, a space Oof. between spaces, Guys, I'm not before you move on, you get to pause. Just for a moment, a few seconds to reflect on and let <sighs> go of the events that led you here. Oh my god. To step back and connect the pieces together. To grasp at that elusive bigger picture. Oh my god. This is so interesting. There's noises. These noises. Stop it. Stop it. Stop. How do you leave notes? Those typewriters? Are you there? Please say something. It could be anything. I just need you to say something. Tell me, please, please, speak, 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 speak. This is just, uh... Yeah. What the heck? It is so cool, though. Okay, this one is tough. Okay. It's gonna kind of just spin its own wheels for a few minutes. Hang with it. Okay, will do. Porn star? What the frig? Yeah, it's music. City. Okay, going through here. Oh, nice lights. I like that. Here we go. Are we going around in circles? Bump, bump. It's music. Nice. Oh. See, like, this is it. The whole game. And there's nothing that's particularly interesting what? about it. You just walk to the end of a hallway. Except, for some reason, Coda gets really fixated on this prison that has all of this modern furniture. And I don't know why, but he decides he needs to revisit this prison. He's gonna start over, use the same assets, turn it into something else. Okay. Okay, cool. Here's version two. 
What's version two? Um. What? Furniture brought in the center. Uh. How about a TV with surround sound? A refrigerator. Put a giant hole in the ground. Um, I want TV. Oh! That's not TV. Okay, now what about along the walls? Let's put a huge picture of a horse. I really like washing machine. Ten stoves lined up along the wall. Uh, okay. What? It's not stoves. I think we should light up this room a bit. A skylight, full ceiling window. Let's open this baby up. Ooh, LED ceiling. Let's do the first one! Up. Okay. And a table. You need a table. We have one. Who are you? Where exactly are you from? I'm pretty sure none of my choices are making any differences. Tables were invented in 1935. Oh. What the frick? Uh, there's a bit more to this one, but what? still, it's not really communicating anything. It, it's kind of just weird for frick? weirdness' sake. What is going on? What is going on? Okay. So, okay. He throws it out and starts over. This time, he comes at the prison idea from a different direction. Uh huh. Hello. Please walk forward. This guide will enable you to follow the instructions carefully. Take care of what you remember in each step. First, click on the table. Good. Go over to the photo frame and click it to turn it slightly. Photo frame. Now, now the floor lamp in the room is off. Turn it back on. Floor lamp? This guy. Now go to the left side sofa. Move it over a little. Uh, left side sofa. This guy. Okay. Finally, touch the shelves. Touch them! That's it. In a real... I cannot see this. That's it. In a real prison... The escape will now open. Return to the start and take it back to your prison. Okay. This is really freaky. Like, why is- what is with prison? Okay, just following directions. Doing my best. That's all that matters. Oh, lord. And of course, now the table is gone and you can't begin the chain of events to escape. What? Here's a version where there are no bars, but you can't actually get to the well. And then a version where the inside of the what? prison is the outside, and the outside is the inside. What the frig? Let me just blink you real quick through a few more of these. I mean, he really unloaded on this prison idea. There's nearly a dozen of them. Whoa. Personally, huh. I think it's awful to watch this. To see a person basically unraveling through their work. Yeah. And for what? Like, at what point do you just go, eh, maybe there are game ideas what? other than this prison that I could be working That's true. But Coda doesn't have that voice telling you to stop. That particular mechanism Whoa. of defense against yourself. Without it, you just spiral. And That's so he sad. keeps going and going and going and going and going. And then he hits on something. Ooh. And he likes it. Good. And that's it. He's done. He stops making prisons. This is the very last version of the prison game that he created. And the reason I think it works is that the prison is not actually in it. What? Okay. Going upwards, going this way, going outside, we gotta be okay. Oh, so the prison's not in it, but it's based on a prison? Okay, oh please, no jumpies. Oh, there's a lamppost. Is this it? Do you just, do you just walk to the lamppost? This is very interesting, what is that? Hello? Hello? Who is this? Hey, it's me. I'm you from after you escaped the prison. What the frig? You're me? So, 
you were trapped in this prison too? Yep. I was in the furniture maze. Yep. It's a conversation. It's a tutorial. And so this is what Coda wants, is to be able to talk to someone, to share what's on his mind, and to get That's some good I'm advice right from someone who knows. Oh my god, this is creepy! But the irony is that even in this scenario, you're still talking to yourself. You know, all of these games so far are Coda talking to himself. Ooh. This one. Oh, that's actually sad. This guy must be so sad. I'm scared and not go out. I'm just exactly the same before. Ooh. No, I'm really the same person now as I was back then. It actually does change. I don't like- I don't feel like I'm the same person at all. It's weird. You're literally just talking to yourself. Oh, good. That's so nice to hear. That makes me feel really happy. Age just kind of does that, you know? I'm still me. Wait, if you're me, then did you get a call from another version of you when you were trapped? No, I think I'm the first person to call back. <laughs> yes, I did get a call. That's how I escaped. Then, can you tell me how to get out? Maybe I could come and find you. What do I have to do? To get out, all you have to do is be sincere. To get out, all you need to tell me how you feel right now. To get out, just talk with me for a bit. What? That will free me? How does that work? Listen, you can't know until you're out. But I promise it works. Just be sincere. It will make sense. Sincere about what? That's exactly what you need to figure out in order to escape. What? What? I can see why he considers this a fitting conclusion to the prison games. After all of the obsession and frustration, just to be told by someone you can trust that things are going to be okay. Wouldn't that be nice? Oh. So what would it look like? Coda wanted to make a game about talking to someone other than himself. That is so sad. Okay, moving forward. Dun -dun 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 um This is really creepy. To me, this environment is meant to represent Coda's hmm. puzzle. With the two doors on either side and a dark transitional space between. Maybe. We on a beach, like a beach house guy. A nice house. I would totally live here. I want to live here. Oh my goodness! I'm glad that I thought it might be a house by myself. It might, it might be miserable. Everyone knows lonesome hands make lousy home. Uh. You'll notice that the quality of the art is a step up from previous it's games, music. including this it's new and improved there. chat system, which he started using from this Don't point worry on. about me. Places from here on out, he begins putting much more effort into the visual polish of his work, and this particular game took two months to create Whoa. as a result. Well now, I might be just getting ahead of yourself. Why would you like start cleaning and then decide whether you can do it right away? I'll finish up here in the meantime. You can please clear the table. Hold on, let me move my thing. I'll finish up here. In the meantime, could you please clear the table? Sure, certainly I shall. Look at that. Um, clear the table. There we go. Much nicer. That's the table I want to see. Now, would you please run into the bedroom and make the bed? Okay, sir, ma'am, thing, whatever. Are we going? We're in the bathroom. Where's the bedroom? Look at that! How you doing? There you go. While you're there, why don't you straighten out the rug a bit? All the little details matter. Certainly. Do you enjoy being a house cleaner? How'd you end up doing this job? It's been a long time since I've seen a house this messy. It's very interesting. A friend dragged me along at a time when I was particularly desperate for cash. Turns out I've never felt so good doing something for money in my whole life. Never did the like never like cleaning my own home. I might have got some demons I ain't ready to face yet. Oh, speaking of demons, someone's put this couch all in a mess. Would you come out and straighten these pillows here? 
Sure, I feel like something's gonna jump out and kill me. This music. Oh, you're standing now. This guy? Yeah. Got it! Oh dear, looks like someone spilled a drink over by the couch. Maybe mop it up as long as you're over there? Sure. <laughs> Cleaned it. I feel compelled to share this incredibly cheesy personal insight. You okay with that? Make it especially cheesy. Yeah, I'll try to get by. Do you absolutely have to? That's a dot. No. <laughs> no. It was a stupid. I. Oh, it was stupid. Never mind. Hey, these dishes need to be washed. Why did you come over to do that? Okay. Dishes clean. You make me do your job. Last, I checked the tub. Needed cleaning. How about you scrub it down the best you can? No need to be perfect. We're all just human. Ooh. God, this this hidden messages. I swear to you. I like the noise. But there's still books scattered on the floor in the bedroom. If so, would you put them on the shelf? Oh, sure. This is really fun. I'm having fun. Shaboom. Perfect. Now then, how about you come and clean these dishes on the After table? the intense what? set of prison games, this house cleaning level almost feels like cleansing. It's the moment after a particularly difficult or traumatic experience where you just need to let it sit and digest inside of you. And eventually cohere into something meaningful. Whatever work you do, you have absolutely get, got to own it. Otherwise, it owns you. So why don't we... Oh my god, no. Why don't we be with the task and leave the future choice? I know that Koda really liked this game. Of all his work, actually, this was the only one that he called me up to ask me to come over and look at it. This was during a period of a few months where he was, like, grossly happy all the time. Just Aww. walked around with a constant smile on his face. Oh my god, so this just keeps repeating itself? That was a good message, though. said I really had a cheesy thought. I was going to say that it occurs to me that one's house is a lot like one's soul. You take care of it, and it takes care of you. <laughs> oh, that's cute. Don't know why I feel so weird saying it to you. I get it. There's a weird thing to say someone you just met. Yeah, you're right. That's pretty cheesy. But there's a bit of truth in it, no? <laughs> anyway. So, housekeeping. Let's keep doing this. Books, would you like to clean up the books? Thanks. Oh, okay. Dun, 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 dun. But who's making the mess? That's my question. Oh, no. Uh, eh. There we go. Shabloop. I'm glad he made this. I'm glad he found some peace. Aww. Is, I feel like this guy's actually really sad. Like, you can make me cry. No. Missy catch a question. But, of this? course, what? it can't last. The music stops, your companion is gone, it's time to leave. The door at the top of the hill is now open as well. Again, you can't stay no. in the dark space for too long. You just can't. You have to keep moving. It's how you stay alive. Yeah. Where do I go? Where do I go? go? Up here. Oh my god, that is a powerful message right there. <sighs> Actually really sad too, but it's true. You just gotta keep on moving. <gasps> Which is the whole point of the puzzle doors, right? That sooner or later you have to pick up and move. I really thought that was the point of it. Wow. This is so powerful. Oh my god, it's getting darker and darker. Adams you love. This one gets a bit goofy. Places. Oh. Why did you come here today? 
Was it to, to improve your life? Oh god, they're right there. Was it to get a better job? Was it to make your relationships more meaningful? No. You came here to become perfect. This workshop is going to teach you how to be perfect. I want your friends, the people in your life, to look at you and think, Wow, this person is a better human being than I am. Right now, why do you think about, what do you think about your own life? Why do you think, who, who do you, who do you, I can't read this, who do you know who else to develop the person to make you feel disgusted in yourself? Compared to your feeling loose, or selfish and grateful, I did to make you into that person. Perfection is within your grasp. And the question is not how to do it, but how to do it efforts, effortlessly. About effortlessly. halfway through the game, the perspective shifts. It's easy, so easy, so being perfect is effortless. This is the key. How do I... What? This is the key. How do I... And achieve? you play as the teacher. Oh. And suddenly, you discover that your teacher is just as bigoted and afraid as you oh. are. Oh, and also you can move around the classroom now. Okay. The keys to... If you are torturing yourself, trying to find the right solutions for your life, you're not doing it right. Can I go up there? Can I go up there? Seek out the only thing that you would do the easiest, simplest path forward. You. It's developing. So what is that? Need to assist, gross. There's no truth. There is no path. What is going on? Do you what easiest? Do what is easiest. So people are just dying right now as this teacher's giving a lecture. Okay. Nothing. No one. Hm. I felt pretty hard for this one. I feel like it's one of the most relatable experiences that you can have. Yeah. To uh, assume that some other person is perfect and totally fulfilled in every way. Yeah, and true. completely miss all of the little flaws that make them painfully human. Mm -hmm. Wow. I think about this game a lot these days. Pretty much. I mean, we everyone needs a game like that in their lives. It's kind of creepy though. Like as everyone's dying behind, screaming behind the dude, it's like I'm just giving a lecture. What we got. This one took a lot longer than all the others for Coda to make. It was Wonder four why. months between this and the last one. That's twice as long as it took him to make any other game before this. And it's not like it's particularly Boxes? complex. So I remember I found that a little Boxes? strange. What the, the heck? Um, are we on a stage? Looks like we're on a stage. Okay. <gasps> All right, the performance is beginning. Please, a uh, place is please. Uh, 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 oh God, what am I doing? All right, this is the scene. You will be playing as me. We are all gathering of professionals. First, you will start out by leaning against this wall. Good. Stay right there. The woman across the room in the chair is a professional photographer of animals. It's your dream in f to photograph animals professionally. This is your one chance to do something from her. To gain something. To succeed. Come on, say something to her. Hello. Sorry, I have to leave. Where is the bathroom? Hello? Hello? That's it? That's not a conversation. You uh, you need to actually converse with her. To be a human being. Do it again. There she is. Uh, hi. <clears throat> uh, I'm super, super scared right now. I like you. Here are my hopes and dreams. Okay. No, no, no! That's not what I said to her at all. You're completely missing the tone of the conversation. I was reserved, but I knew that I, what I wanted. I was confident. For some reason, it was just that one moment. But I was confident. I can't read this fast. But is that maybe it's that you need to, you need to be better and feel the setting. So there is a lot of people around us. I'll give you some props to work with. These comes with a bounce and you can touch them and re represent people nearby. 
Now talk to her again. Can I? Boing. <laughs> Boing. Um, you must have worked really hard to get where you are. I bet you've learned to, to lean into the pain. What are some sacrifices you have to make? Oh no, oh no. You're messing it up again! Am I gonna mess up? You'll freak her out and the conversation gets too personal that quickly. Do you not realize how important this is for me? You'll never get another opportunity like this again. Uh, happy... Hmm. I want to say something. Try stepping back from the stage. Okay. Oh my god, okay. Where did everybody go? Just gonna move backwards. Oh! Oh. Does this represent, like, you doubting yourself and everything you do? Okay. Okay, yes. Now this is working. The game ends with this eerie premonition of what's going to happen next in Coda's life. The solution to social anxiety, to I knew it. fears of having to perform and having to chase success, the answer for Coda is to withdraw, to hide himself away. No. Which is what leads to scenarios like the stairs that slowed you down several You're games ago, great. where it just becomes harder and harder to access Coda's inner landscape because he keeps retreating. He just keeps backing away from possible connections to anyone other than himself. And to be honest, I didn't consider it very healthy when I first played this. You know, it, it looks to me like he was trying to justify the idea of just disconnecting yourself from What was that? What was that? And that wasn't what I wanted for him or for his games. Because I feel like a lot of his games are inviting me to connect. Yeah. To connect with this person. To What's bring him closer. But what can you do? After this, Koda went off and took another five months to make a new game. Holy crap. 2010. Well, I mean, you have to spend a lot of the games. What? To play this game properly, you must keep your eyes closed. What? Uh, no! What, do I have to close my eyes? Help me, I'm blind. I can't see, okay. Um, am I supposed to I close my eyes? Okay. Um, I'm just gonna do it. Okay, one, two, three. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm okay. Okay. What just happened? Um. You should probably open your eyes if you haven't oh. <laughs> It's pretty much impossible to solve otherwise. Yeah. And there is a solution, by the way. One hour later. All right, let me explain how you're supposed to do this. Okay, thank you. On either side of the room are elevators, which go up to an upper level. Oh. You have to go up, walk over to the person who's standing there, and then select dialogue option number two. Him in elevators, okay. Crap. Speak something into the. What is with the whole sincerity thing? Dude! I keep making these. Yep, that's the truth. Oh. I don't feel it anymore. Like I said, I was getting concerned. He's me. First off, He's never been this explicit in his work about exactly what he's thinking. So, where's that come from? Talking. But then, even weirder, his never work has honest. potentially stopped being an outlet for him. Say... Not like he's having trouble iterating on ideas, but he literally just can't think of new ideas anymore. And in person, he was oh, being a lot so more sad. distant than usual. Like, you know how sometimes a person will just deflect anything that you say yeah. in order to keep themselves disconnected all the time? It was that kind of thing. <sighs> Here was the point in my relationship with Coda where I really started to wonder if he needed my help in some way. That's so sad. That is so, so sad. His games are going to get more desperate from here on out. After this game, it's almost six months before he finishes something new. Oh no. Is, is it gonna get hello? 
Where am I? Where am I? Oh, okay. Where does this island come from? Oh. Cool. Is that a person? How lovely. It's been a long time since I talked to anyone. Oh. What's wrong? You look lost. Uh. I'm completely out of ideas. When I try to create, I feel empty. I have nothing to give my work. Oh. Go this way. This is so sad. Oh no! What's happened? Did something change? There's a machine that kept me going and it stopped. I'm trying to find this engine that I used to protect me. It started again. Which way do I go? Which way do I go? Oh. You know what's really tough and sad? Is that when you're a creative person, this kind of stuff happens. And it's not fair for you and it's not fair for anybody else. People who are a fan of your work, people who are a fan, like, ugh. What? You have no, you have to take me to it. I need to know why I stopped. Or why it stopped. Just a random person island just talking to me. I like talking to islands. You have to take me to it. I can do if that. If the last There's game featured Coda talking explicitly about his creative frustrations, this one turns it up to 11. Now, put yourself in my shoes playing this. Here's a friend whose work is exhibiting signs of struggle, frustration, anxiety, depression, even. And yet, still, he keeps making games. He keeps throwing himself into the grinder, even yeah. when he clearly doesn't have the energy for it anymore. Why? What is it for? Yeah, what is it for? Oh. Where are we going? Perfect. Come along, I'll show it to you. Where are we going? From my perspective at the time, and, and just what I knew of him, this was a result of how isolated he was. He was in his own little bubble, just sitting at his computer all day, not really showing these games to anyone, uh, not releasing them onto the internet, <sighs> and so he didn't have anyone outside of himself to connect with. He had no outlet to ground himself on. So sad. You have to open the other first door. Okay. Thank. Close the door. Uh, the door is closed. Oh, okay, now what? And you have to close the first door. And you have to open the first door. And you have to press the switch on the inside. Wait, what? In that case, open the first door. In that case, press the door. In that case, press the first door. There we go. There you go. Now we gotta... Now just close the first door. Now just o open the first door. I'll just press the switch here. Please do this. Yes! You can't... Talk yourself out of loneliness. That's true. It doesn't work that way. You can't be the one writing both the questions and the, the answers. Then there's no movement. Then there's no circulation. If all of your anxieties are being so channeled sad. into your work, then if the work ever fails, you have no backup and you're just going to crash. Yeah. What's going on? Trust me, you'll see. You have to say that your work is fun and easy. You have to say that the game development is simple and you're joyous and that you love it 100% of the time. 
Okay, making games is simple. Sure, making games is easy. Alright, making games. Oh. Ah, this feels wonderful, but it wasn't true. Don't worry about it. Just keep talking. Keep saying that crea creation is easy. When I make games, I feel completely energized. I'm constantly excited and enthusiastic about my work. But easy, it never stops being easy. Oh my god, this is so weird. Keep going. Seeing this game at the time that he made it, it looked really unhealthy. I was watching him do this to himself, and I hated it. I oh hated god. seeing him so trapped. It's like... Video games are not worth this amount of suffering. This is someone I really cared about. And I used to get so much joy out of seeing him create. For him to suddenly become angry and frustrated like this, it was the worst thing for me. Oh, this is really sad. I don't know. This is what I felt at the time. I don't know how else to explain it. I wanted it to stop more than anything. It never felt so rotten. I just... I needed more than I had ever needed anything for this to stop. I'm fine, I'm fine. What the heck was that? But it didn't stop. <laughs> After finishing this one, Coda takes another seven months and comes up with a new game. <laughs> He's getting consumed by his work. This is why it's really sad. He's literally getting consumed by his work. And something he loves, too. Oh, hi. I can't really see this. We captured the machine. It's, it's waiting for you now. I intend to be quick. I intend to be quiet. I intend to be brutal. Very good. Just be warned that someone called the press, so we might have a bit of tension on this one. Also, one more thing you should know about the machine. Okay. Um. Um. Oh. My god. Whoa. Holy shoot, man. Stopped. And of course, it's the machine. You stopped feeding us. Your work was keeping us alive. Your work was keeping us healthy. Those people out there. Can you imagine what pain you've put them through? It was only because of your creations and can make us make it every day. We'll go back to testing, trusting you after this job. So creepy. How about this for a start? You need to go to the people who are out there and apologize to them. You have to admit the people that you allowed this, this, them to suffer. I've been so alone. Carefully, I know how to hurt you. I have seen this thing in fear. <sighs> wow. All right, then I will apologize to the people on your behalf. <gasps> My followers. My friends. It, fail it falls on me to deliver bad news. I have some trouble revelation. The machine will not apologize to us. The machine refuses to admit 
that it deliberately hurt us. But this is not important. We are stronger than we think we are, than it thinks we are. We will find the way to live without it. We do not need its games. Let us pay retribution. Let us show it that we are not failures. Follow me. We will destroy the machine. Follow me. We will destroy everything that the machine has created. Oh, this is sad. What the heck? Where's the machine? Oh! He's destroying everything he created. <laughs> oh my god. So now the work is becoming self-destructive. Yeah. And I'll tell you, at the time that I first played this game, shortly after he made it, here's what I'm thinking to myself. I'm thinking that Code is stuck in his own head. And that it's having a very negative effect on him, and that all he needs to do is just start showing his work to people. Yeah. To get some actual feedback on his games. It might get him out of isolation. <gasps> and so, as I'm thinking this, I realize that I could be the one to initiate it. Because it would never occur to Coda to start this actively so powerful, soliciting feedback. Funny. So, what if I did it for it? If he could see the difference it would make to have more actual conversations with other human beings, would that bring him out of his mental spiral? Would it give him confidence in himself? Would it bring meaning so back into his work? <laughs> Nobody deserves this. So I started showing Coda's work to people. I took this one, and the islands which you just played, the theater, the notes, the house cleaning game, and some of the prison escape games. I brought them to people that I knew and, and trusted. I asked their opinions. And the great part is that they really loved his games. You know, the point of it all was just to give him some external reference point, but they, they genuinely loved his work. Oh. There was nothing for him to be afraid of. Is that the machine? Put down your weapon. Can you see why I felt like this was the right thing to do? Yeah. Because it's the thing that I always feel like I need. To be told that my work is good. That I am good. When, when someone really connects with a thing that I've made, when they see themselves purely in my work, there's nothing that feels better. And I got to give that very same feeling to my friend. I did something, I really felt like I'd done something good. Like, like I was a good person. I felt like there was a friend who was in trouble and was unhappy and, and maybe didn't like themselves and I could fix it. Yeah. If I could give him this gift, maybe I could fix the problem. Yeah. When they told me how much they enjoyed his games, it was the best feeling. It was the absolute best <laughs> feeling. It made me feel so happy. So beautifully, beautifully happy. <sighs> um. So anyway, Coda finishes this game, and then really he just kind of takes off for a while. So this is June of 2011, and I didn't hear anything from him for several weeks, I guess. Uh, and so out of nowhere, one day I get an email, and it's got a private link to a new game of Coda's. No. Oh. This one is called The Tower, and to my knowledge, it's the last game that oh. Coda ever made. So let's take a look. Whoa. This is the last one he ever made? What the hell? And this is where I have trouble saying anything meaningful about Coda's work. 
because more than anything else, the tower just feels distant. It feels like it's trying to distance itself from the world. True. It's a very cold game. Mm. This is so amazing. You know what's really sad though is when people start hating things that they love. That's this room when it... actually has a maze in it. Oh. What the heck? Except that all the walls of the maze are invisible. And then every time you touch one of the walls, there's this awful flashing and noise. So the experience is really miserable. The game goes beyond not being meant to be played. It actually seems to despise the player for trying to play it at all. But I do want to show you the rest of the level. So when you're ready to continue, press enter and I'll put a bridge over the maze. Oh, cool. Oh, jeez, you can fall off, okay. It's just really upsetting because, you know, I feel like he's a very passionate game creator and to put himself down throughout his own work, to mock himself in his own work, that's what really is extremely to be fair, upsetting. It's not like this is the first game that's needed some modification to be playable. Mm -hmm. Like the house cleaning game. You know, that one used to actually loop the cleaning chores and you just cleaned a house forever. Huh. I had to cut it off so that you could exit the house and the game would actually end. True. But that game had an idea that it was actually trying to communicate. What's the deeper idea behind the invisible maze? The only way past this challenge is to randomly guess the six digit code. Like the invisible maze, it's frustrating to me because it's the opposite of everything else that Coda has made. It doesn't encourage thought or engagement. It doesn't ask anything of me, except a lot of my time. If I could have reached him during this time, then maybe I could have asked him, but I couldn't. I still don't really understand why this is here. I'll put the code on the ground for you here, though, so that we can move on. Ah, uh, thank you. Because me with numbers are, like, terrible. So this is one... Five... No, no. One, five, one, six, no, four, five, six, one, seven. There we go. Did we get it? Yeah, we did. Whoa. Okay, so now stairs are growing. Nice. Oh. Up's the daisy. Oh, man, go back into creating games, I'm telling you. You know how to... What? The switch to open this door is actually on the other side of the door, meaning that it's literally impossible to solve from this side. So. Even if you somehow brute forced your way through the first two challenges and you got to this point, there's actually oh. just no way to progress. Oh man. And it's scary for me. The idea of Coda cutting himself off entirely, just saying, you know, that's it, that's the end of the conversation, not giving me any way to fix the problem. I feel like a failure, I guess, when I can't fix the problem. But I can open this door for you, so let me do that. Thank you. Was I a failure for not understanding this game? I mean, I don't know why I would be. It's not like everything needs to have a solution. Yeah. But I feel it somehow. I feel like I failed. And no. I don't understand why. No, you didn't. I remember. It's June of 2011. I'm playing this for the very first time. And as I'm playing, I'm thinking to myself, I don't know this person. I have no idea who this person is. It wasn't the guy I knew. It wasn't my friend. I had come to so many conclusions from looking at all of his work up to this point, and then suddenly none of them... I had been trying to, though. That was the thing. For yeah. years, I was trying to get to know him, to understand who he actually was and, and what he stood for. I asked so him sad. so many times to please just tell me what his games mean to him. Yeah. I asked him please to tell me what the three dots mean. 
And he wouldn't. It's so sad. That's so, so sad. I just felt so strongly that if I could have connected with him, that if I could have somehow made his work my own, that I would finally be once and for all happy. It was that I needed to friend. see myself in someone else. I needed to be someone other than me. Yeah. But he stopped and left. And it felt somehow like I had failed. That's so, so sad. Oh, man. You know, when people think of themselves as a failure in everything that they love, and they put their whole heart and soul into did something, I screw up? it's... What? Dear Davey, thank you for your interest in my games. I am the reason that you stopped making games, aren't I? I need to ask you to not it's speak to because of what I did. Anymore. What? I poisoned it for you. What? What? Thank you for interest in my games. I need to ask you to not speak to me anymore. What? What? I don't think I ever told you this, but when I took your work and I was showing it to people, it actually felt... <laughs> It felt as though I were responsible for something important and valuable. Why do you think I'm making these games for you? Oh. Holy crap, this just took a turn. You're so and affecting my personal the people space. who played them, they treated me like I was important. They really listened and cared about what I had to say. Even though I was showing your work, it was... I felt good about myself. Finally. For a moment, while I had that, I liked myself. <sighs> Taking my games and showing them to people against my wishes? What? Giving them something that is not yours to give? Violating one boundary that keeps me safe? What the... Would you stop changing my games? Stop adding lampposts to them? What? Would you simply and then let you them stopped. be? And I didn't are? have anything left to show people. I, I just had to be with myself. And as soon as that happened, what? there was no feeling at all. Nothing. Less than nothing. What does that mean? My new idea is not making me depressed. Low points are the part of your process. The fact that you think I am frustrated and broken says more about you than about me. <gasps> oh, I can't get over here. I realize this doesn't make sense to you yet. Which is fine, you're not my problem to solve. But I do hope that one day it clicks, and that you make peace with this thing you are wrestling. I'm afraid that I did something really stupid because I don't like myself. When you finally see what I get when I am talking about, don't say anything. That's why I'm releasing this collection of your work. Is because I haven't been able to find any other way to reach you. I've tried everything. And so a part of me has hope that if I put this compilation out into the world, and if I put my name on it, that maybe enough people will play it so that it'll find its way to you, so that I can tell you that I'm sorry. I know I screwed up. If I apologize to you truly and deeply, Will you start making games again? Please, I need to feel okay with myself again. And I always felt okay as long as I had your work to see myself in. I mean, is, is something wrong with me? Because I know that I did an awful thing, and I'm doing it again right now. Like, I'm, I'm showing people your work, but I can't 
stop myself from doing it. That's how badly I need to feel something again, like I'm an addict. There has to be something wrong with me. Can I apologize? What if I tell you I was wrong? Will that work? Will that fix it? I, I, I don't know. I don't think it will, but there's nothing else that I can do. Just tell me what you want. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Please, start making games again. Please help me. Please give me some of whatever it is that, that makes you complete. I want whatever that wholeness is that you just summoned out of nothing and you put into your work. You were complete in some way that I never was. And I want to know how to, how to, I want to know how to be a good person. I want to know how not to hate myself. Please. I'm fading, and all I want is to know that I'm going to be okay. <sighs> oh, God. Okay, that just hit me really hard. He's making this game as a message to re- mm. <sighs> Or more, 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 more love, more praise, more people telling me that I'm good. Always more, more, more. It's like a disease. <sighs> oh God, this is sad. <sighs> solution, solution, solution. <sighs> You are good. You're fine. I guess if someone had told me ahead of time that he just really enjoyed making prison games, maybe I wouldn't have thought he was so desperate. I wouldn't have told so many people that he was depressed. Maybe he just likes making prisons. Maybe. Oh, man. But it's okay. You were just trying to help. You were just trying to help. Even now, the disease is telling me to stop. Don't show people what a shitty person you are. They'll hate you. You're a good person. You're literally just trying to help. Okay, I'm not okay. This is a totally different experience than what I usually play. Oh, man. The walls are caving in. Ugh. If I knew that my life depended on finding something to be driven by other than validation, what would that even be? <laughs> it's strange, but the thought of not being driven by external validation is unthinkable. Like, I actually cannot conceive of yeah. what that would be like. Some people need things, though. Don't ever... Mm. Everyone is different. You do what helps you. Oh my god. What now? I mean, you use him as an inspiration, and when that inspiration dies down, it's... I think I need to go. And I'm sorry, because I know that I said that I would be here and I, and I would walk you through this, but I'm starting to feel like I have a lot of work to do. I have a lot that I need to make up for. And so I'm just going to... Okay. think it would be like this <laughs> okay where are we now we're in a desert okay Whew, this is a lot to take in a lot to think about you know the thing is is when people take somebody as an inspiration or something and they become obsessive with it to give them their life meaning it it gets hard and tough and like obsession and addiction is not good but you were literally just trying to help and you thought you would help but things didn't go the right way and it's okay like you want to hear you're good enough everything's fine and curating games are hard oh 
Where are we now? Elevator? Prison? Quitting games is tough. Mm. Oh man. Where are we going now? I mean, I don't even know how people do it. How do people create games? I don't know. It's... Maybe he will create games again, but you didn't... You didn't hurt him. You thought you were literally gonna help him, but... You didn't intentionally do it. And that's what, that's what matters. You did not intentionally do it. You didn't try to hurt somebody. I want to. I want to know what you guys think too in the comments. Where are we going? This is so powerful. It's so pretty. What? Oh my God! No. the end this. This is how games are created. I don't know how this is possible. That's it? That's it? That's- Oh my god, I wanna know if there's a happy ending to this. So, you know, the thing is, when you get so inspired by somebody, and they become, like, your addiction in a way, as he was saying, you get obsessed, and then you don't know that you could be hurting someone while thinking that you were helping them, but... Oh, man. Oh, this is so sad. This is so sad. Because you know what? He didn't intentionally... He didn't intentionally want to hurt him. And truth be told, though... It ended up going in the direction that he thought it was never going to go in. And look what happened. Look what happened. So... 
I, ho I hope just things happen. Like, this is based on a real story, and I hope that Coda does come back to make new games to help inspire others, because those games are amazing. But... Oh my god, this is so sad. He didn't even know that he was gonna hurt him and ended up actually hurting him in the end, but... You didn't do something wrong. You didn't. What you did was you thought you were helping somebody, but in fact, you took it too far. But you know what? You're not a bad person for doing that. You're not. You're not. And you're not... You gotta understand that there's things that happen in the end, like... Sometimes it's not just you that may have made him stop making the games. It's not. It may have been total overworking and stress or something else. You can't just... You can't just assume that it's just you, you know? You can't. And... If you ever see this, I just... Thank you for creating this game and for raising awareness about his games because they're amazing. And I totally agree with you that they're very inspirational and that they deserve to be seen by everybody. And that maybe his games will come back one day, but... Ah, it's heartbreaking. Ah, that just broke my heart, but... <sighs> Thank you for this. Thank you, because... We all have, like, we're all inspired by people. We all have heroes, but sometimes we all go too far. And you know what? It's human. You're human. You're human. Things happen. So don't be hurting yourself over this because you think, wow, I made him stop. It's like, no, you didn't. He, you may have been a part of it, but when it comes down to it, it's based on the person's choice. It could have been other things too, so. <sighs> thank you for this though. This was more of a, and I wanna thank, I wanna thank squad member, moderator, and also patron Riley for this because this is totally different than what we usually play and I'm glad I was able to play it all in one sitting because, oh, things like this happen all the time and it's sad. Uh, when we all need to like latch on to something for to find inspiration, but then it goes too far It happens to everyone So thank you for this. I enjoyed this thoroughly. I did I truthfully did enjoy this, but I just left Left a feeling in my soul like I just left a feeling in my soul But anyway guys, I want to know your thoughts on this if you want to if you really want to purchase the beginner's guide you could buy it off of steam it's an amazing game and it's a great experience to play for yourself it's different when you watch someone play it, but when you play it yourself mm, it hits some hard emotions but yeah anyway guys don't forget don't forget to check the links in the description down below and yeah just know that if you are inspired by someone and even if you do hurt somebody know that forgiveness plays a great part in it forgiveness does play a great part in it and if they're the better person, they will forgive you. They will. Because you know what? You're feeling remorse, you're feeling sorry, and that's the good start. That's the good start. But if they're a good person, they will forgive you. They will. And in the end, it all stems down to personal belief and who you are as a person. So, <sighs> this had a great lesson to it. Mighty fine lesson to it. But anyway, guys, I hope you have an amazing day. Stay safe out there. Oh, that just touched really close to heart for me, but... As always, Miss Cats, until the next video, embrace your inner fangirl and your inner fanboy every single day.